With the success of Dragon Ball Super Broly, we can't help but wonder if there are other non-canon characters that deserve a reboot in the main timeline of the series. There are plenty of forgotten characters from Dragon Ball movies, filler episodes, and the much-hated Dragon Ball GT that could all work well in a Dragon Ball Super reimagining. So here's some Dragon Ball characters who we believe desperately need a reboot. Cooler. Let's start off with the only other character aside from Broly to have more than one Dragon Ball Z film, Cooler, the non-canon brother of Frieza. Like Broly, Cooler had some pretty lackluster films, but the character managed to become somewhat popular amongst fans of the franchise. In fact, it wouldn't be crazy to say that Cooler was close to Broly in popularity, and as such, we think he deserves another shot in the form of a canon appearance. Cooler's first film was about the villain seeking revenge for the death of his brother, and his second film involved a weird, liquid metal-like version of the character that failed to improve upon the first film's faults. The character could use a huge overhaul, and being Frieza's brother actually provides a lot of interesting potential story ideas for a reboot. For instance, how much more interesting would it be if Cooler was, say, a good guy instead of a villain? With his brother being one of the fiercest villains in the galaxy, seeing Cooler as a good guy who defected from his family and their empire would make for some great drama between the two brothers. This is just a suggestion but any way you look at it, Cooler has a lot of reboot potential and should definitely appear in a super movie or saga sometime soon. Pycon. Pycon has only made two major appearances in the Dragon Ball franchise. The first was in the filler saga that took place after the Cell Saga. Known as the Otherworld Tournament Saga, this filler arc depicted a tournament between various fighters from different quadrants of the universe, all of which fought each other to see which Kai had the strongest warrior. One of these fighters was Pycon, a green alien with amazing power that made him the strongest warrior of the West Galaxy. The character has yet to appear in the main canon of the franchise. With the success of Dragon Ball Super Bro, and with more super episodes possibly on the way, we think that Pycon should make an appearance somewhere along the way. Maybe he could be rebooted as a member of another universe or as some kind of agent of the gods. Whatever they might decide to do with the character, it would definitely be cool to get more Pycon down the line, since even though he's more or less a clone of Piccolo, there is a lot of potential in the character, especially if he got a slight redesign and story change like Broly did. The Shadow Dragons Dragon Ball GT is pretty much hated by every fan of the franchise, which is why many were glad to find out that it was no longer considered canon. That said, the series still had some pretty neat ideas going for it one of which was the Shadow Dragons. The Shadow Dragons were evil dragons created from the negative energy of the Dragon Balls, energy that was manifested as a result of overuse. Though these villains didn't end up being depicted all that well and the entire Shadow Dragon saga was as bad as the rest of the series, the basic concept of the Shadow Dragons is actually pretty interesting. Think about it. The Dragon Balls were a big part of the original series, but as the focus of the franchise shifted to martial arts, the Dragon Balls were really only included to remind everyone that they existed. In other words, there seemed to be no stakes attached to the Dragon Balls, so maybe rebooting the Shadow Dragons from GT could be a good way to make the Dragon Balls important in the franchise again. The Shadow Dragon saga centered around the fact that the Dragon Balls were not designed to be used as frequently as they are in the series, so playing with that concept could provide some interesting results were it rebooted correctly. Pan. The end of Dragon Ball Z introduced us to Pan, Gohan and Videl's daughter who showed just as much potential as her father and grandfather before her. However, when it came to Dragon Ball GT, her character was pretty much always depicted as a damsel in distress, or as someone who caused more problems than she fixed. This is another reason why many fans are glad that GT is no longer canon, and with a new version of Pan being introduced in Super, there is hope that she will grow up to be a much better version of the character. For starters, even though she's still a little baby, Pan is shown to be strong enough to fly into space without any trouble, constantly flying around without anyone having taught her to do so. In other words, Pan is something of a prodigy, and we think that should be worked into her character. If there really are new episodes of Super on the way, then maybe we can see Pan grow into her own as a martial artist. We're not sure exactly how a Pan saga might play out, but we definitely think the character should get her own story arc, if only to make up for how poorly she was depicted in GT. 
Garlic Jr. Garlic Jr. is another movie villain that has a fair amount of reboot potential, though perhaps not directly. The character first appeared in the Dragon Ball Z film The Dead Zone, where he revealed he was the son of Garlic, the other candidate for the position of Earth's guardian who competed with Kami. Angered that he was not chosen by the previous guardian, Garlic attempted an assault on the lookout, resulting in his imprisonment. With his final words, Garlic wished that his son would take revenge on Kami, which he attempted to do hundreds of years later, resulting in the plot of Dead Zone, and the character would eventually return in the Garlic Jr. saga of Dragon Ball Z, a filler saga that is not considered part of the main canon. As such, the story of Garlic Jr. and his father is prime material for rebooting into the main canon of the franchise, though we'd recommend one major change. Were this story to become part of the main canon of the franchise, we think it would be better to focus on Garlic and not his son, since there's more story potential in a power-mad alien who is denied the position of Earth's godlike guardian. The assault on the lookout that was glossed over would make a much better saga than Garlic's son getting revenge, and we think it could make for a great future saga of Super. Grand Kai Another interesting deity in Dragon Ball is the Grand Kai, the Kai in charge of the four Kais of Universe 7. The character has only appeared in non-canon Dragon Ball media, but we think he deserves to be rebooted in some form. The Grand Kai was mentioned in the manga, meaning that he definitely exists, but we've never seen him in a canon appearance, something that should definitely change. Just take a look at how cool and eccentric of a character he is. Suffice it to say, the Grand Kai is a fun character that definitely needs to show up in the main canon of Dragon Ball. Android 13 In an attempt to get revenge on Goku for destroying the Red Ribbon Army, Dr. Jiro built Android 17 and 18 to kill him. But as their names imply, they were not the first androids to be created by the Red Ribbon Army. The Red Ribbon Army built an entire line of androids, most of which were deemed failures, which is why we only see a few throughout the series. We do, however, meet Android 13, as well as Androids 14 and 15 in the film Super Android 13. These characters and their the film was rather underwhelming at the end of the day, but showcasing the rest of the androids of the Red Ribbon Army would make for a good saga were Super to continue. Think about how cool it would be to have androids 17 and 18 fighting against their siblings as the rest of Dr. Zero's creations activate to take revenge on Goku. He would have to be much, much stronger, but we think a reboot of Android 13 could definitely work. And man, that trucker hat. Tapion, Minosha, and Hirudegarn. Dragon Ball Z Wrath of the Dragon told the story of Hirudegarn, a monster that was sealed away in two halves, which were guarded by brothers Tapion and Minosha. The monster eventually made his return on Earth, which unfolded into the events of the film. Though the film wasn't the best Dragon Ball movie, there are some neat ideas that are worth salvaging for reboot material, namely the idea of a dragon being sealed away and guarded by brothers, as well as Trunks' character development in the film. The latter is specifically interesting since Trunks could use some character development after he and Goten were permanently sidelined throughout all of Super. Tapion and his story managed to provide some interesting character moments for Trunks, and were he given focus in his own arc or film rebooting the idea of Hirudegarn, it would definitely make for a great story. Perhaps a rebooted version of Wrath of the Dragon could simplify the plot a bit, and perhaps it could take place on Earth during the Tournament of Power, as Trunks and Goten are watching after the islands of animals that Android 17 normally guards. While protecting the island, the kids could encounter Hirudegarn, only to learn that when sleeping, it turns into two alien warriors, unfolding into a mini-saga side story that explores Trunks' character, and, like the original, gives him the sword that his future self is known for. Bojack Bojack first appeared in the Dragon Ball Z film Bojack Unbound, which is not that great, but the character has potential, specifically in his design and pirate status. Beyond these two things, the character was pretty bland, wanting to take over the universe and transforming into a powered-up version of himself, only to be defeated by Gohan with the help of Goku. Sounds pretty generic, right? But if Bojack were to be rebooted, we think the people behind said reboot should really lean into that pirate angle, making him less of a villain and more of an anti-hero seeking power but also willing to side with Goku and friends in certain situations. In other words, Bojack might work better as a recurring character rather than a one-time villain, first showing up as someone that Goku and his friends have to fight but fleeing at the last minute to return in various situations, perhaps eventually becoming a friend and ally, though that might not work since it would make for one too many former villains turned heroes on the team. We just want the character to get a reboot in some form or another, since his design is very cool, and his basic concept would work pretty well to switch things up in the usual Dragon Ball formula. Launch 
Our final entry is less of a reboot and more of a reintroduction, but we desperately want it to happen all the same. Throughout a majority of Dragon Ball, the character of Launch was present alongside Master Roshi, but in Dragon Ball Z, the character was noticeably absent, only making brief appearances throughout the series. As many Dragon Ball fans know, Launch was a rough and tumble blonde outlaw who committed crimes for cash and was rather trigger happy even in the tamest situations. However, what made Launch so, shall we say, interesting was the fact that she had a second personality, a blue-haired version of herself that was much calmer and kinder and would appear whenever she sneezed. It was a strange character attribute to say the least, and it was pretty much only used for gags throughout the series, but we can't say we don't miss the strange character. In fact, this is part of the reason why we hope that Launch might make a return sometime in the franchise, perhaps if Super gets more episodes. There could be a small filler saga exploring what the crazy character has been up to this entire time. So, what do you think? Do these failed Dragon Ball characters deserve a reboot? Did we leave out any of your favorite characters who you think deserves a second chance? Let us know down in the comments section below, and don't forget to subscribe to CBR for more Dragon Ball videos. Thanks for watching!